Let's talk Fast 10. If you've liked all the Fast and the Furious movies, why are you watching this video? You already know you're going to love Fast 10. If, however, you're like me and you go back and forth on some of them, like, eh, one was fine. It was an okay movie. I don't know why we're at 10 of these now, plus a spin-off, Hobbs and Shaw. This is asinine. We're living in a simulation. They don't even seem like they're written by people anymore. AI took over four movies back. Vin Diesel hasn't been real then either. He, he looks fake. He looks CG. Something about the makeup or the fact that he looks completely unnatural as a human being. I don't know what it is, but everything's off with me. So here we are at Fast 10. I hated Fast 9, or Fine, or whatever it was called. We're back again with Dominic Toretto and his family. And just like every Fast and Furious movie, it is all about family. And they remind you over and over and over again. Because they say the word family a thousand times. These movies aren't deep. They're not complex. They're dumb as all hell. They make no sense. Science is out the window. It's all about the spectacle. It's all about the explosions. It's all about the, the chaos. And a lot of people like that. So, Fast 10 has all of that in spades. This movie costs $350 million. It's up on the screen. Movie's two hours and 20 some minutes. It's long, it's loud. A lot of stuff blowing up. A lot of stuff being really stupid. If you like them, you will love this. There, I can't foresee a scenario where you liked Fast and the Furious 9 and you don't like Fast 10. It is a cliffhanger. This is a three-part new trilogy. So this is part one of A New Deathly Hollows, And you have to wait a year or two or however long it takes for them to get all these assholes back in another movie and do it all over again. Blowing more stuff up. Maybe Dom drives a volcano. Maybe Dom rides his car through a tornado. Maybe Dom goes back into prehistoric times and he has to outrun a T-Rex. Who knows? Anything goes in these films. No one dies. Nothing makes a lick of sense. Characters come and go just at will. These characters are resurrected more than the brothers in Supernatural. It just never ends, and these movies never will. So I don't need to convince you to go see it or not see it. You've already made up your mind. You love Fast and the Furious. Enjoy it. Have a good time. As for the people that are on the fence, that liked a couple of the earlier ones, lost the plot around the halfway mark, um, this is just more of the same from 7 and 8 and 9. It, it's incredibly stupid. And some people can have a good time with that. For me, I was kind of back and forth on it. The action scenes are fantastic. Completely absurd this time around. Even more so than the past ones. There's like seven. And they're all ludicrous. Who's also a character in this movie. Some people will say what separates this from the others is the villain. Dante, played by Jason Momoa. And I will say, yeah, he's, he's having fun. He reminds me of John Travolta in the mid to late 90s where he played all those hammy villains. Caster Troy from Face Off, character from Con Air. He's really hamming it up and having fun. I don't think he's Travolta levels of cool. He's definitely more extreme than that though. He's basically Bugs Bunny meets Caster Troy. And this whole th and, that, and that really works within the realm of Fast 10 because it feels like a Saturday morning Looney Tunes cartoon. A movie franchise that used to be about drag racing is now loosely based on the video game Super Mario Kart. Dom and his car are fused together now. They're one and the same. When he coughs, the car kind of pops in the air. When he moves his arm, the car goes that way. It's all one to one. At one point, there's a giant bomb ball that rolls down the city streets of Rome. And not just one street, all of the streets in Rome. The physics in Fast and the Furious are their own thing. Like I said, Dom and his car are one to one, meaning um, at one point there's an explosion that could hurt some people up ahead. And he kind of speed racers his ass up there, flips the car on its side, and it's taking the explosion, blocking the flames. <laughs> Dom tips his fictitious hat. <laughs> goes back down, on with his way to stop the next thing. He might have to take the car off a makeshift ramp into the side of a crane that flips around and bounces the ball in another direction like he's playing a game of Marble Madness on the Nintendo. It is madness. This car's like the Terminator. It cannot be destroyed. It takes explosions head on. Spear hooks go through the doors. It's driving down the side of the Hoover Dam. Nothing will stop it. 
and nothing will stop this franchise or this family. Brie Larson's another new cast member to join the family. I, I don't have much to say. She looks good. She looks really good. Uh, that's not really a shock though. As far as her character goes, meh. All the women are just kind of hot. All the guys are just kind of there. N none of these characters really have any sort of personality. They, they crack jokes once in a while. They blow stuff up. It's really just looking cool doing stuff. So she fits in in that aspect. But I will say the way she's introduced and this other giant Chad bodybuilder guy is so laughable. This was in the trailer and I thought, okay, this was a fun little trailer moment. No, it's in the movie. So in the trailer and in the movie, we see them talking about past Fast and the Furious movies and they're showing like highlight reels of the drag races and of semi trucks blowing up and stuff. And I guess they add satellite footage of all of this at the time. I found it so fucking dumb, but it's Fast and the Furious. It's just par for the course. So yeah, they have these like perfectly framed shots of the drag racing that they used to do back in the early 90s. And then the shots of them like hanging off the side of a semi. Absolutely stupid. And the fact that they're talking about this on these hovering flat panel digital futuristic TVs in a completely empty CG room is just icing on this shit Sunday. What a bizarre setup. It felt like it was filmed way after the fact and they're like, well, we don't really have the time to do like a set dressing or to rent out a space to put these guys in. Let's just do it in green screen. The Fast and the Furious franchise to me can be summed up as a dumb man's Mission Impossible franchise. There are a lot of them. They seem to have no end in sight, but I feel like there's a sophistication separation between the two. There's a lot of craft on display in Fast 10. A lot of it, a lot of creative stuff going on. Um, but I think the difference is Mission Impossible skews more on the practical side of things, at least from a visual standpoint. I don't feel like I'm watching a video game nonstop. And back to Jason Momoa, his character feels like he's from a video game. The plot he comes up with is so intricately orchestrated. John Doe from Seven would look at it and be like, damn dude, that's impressive. That's dedication. Momoa's character Dante was retconned to be in Fast and the Furious 5. It's completely laughable. So his dad dies, he loses all his money, and he of course blames Dom and the family. That means the rest of his life is dedicated to making them miserable. This is a carefully constructed plan that he's put into motion. And anytime one of these long action sequences take place, it's freaking hilarious. Because Momoa comes out doing this every time, like, this is what I planned all along. I wanted Dom to get chased by this gun turret. I foresaw Dom literally lifting his car up sideways, ripping off the door and using it as a human shield, taking out a gun turret, then getting in his vehicle, driving super fast away, only to have two helicopters come up and try to gangbang him, shoot spear hooks into his car. <laughs> Dominic then hits the NOS, which gets him out of every single situation ever. All you have to do is turn on the NOS. <laughs> Just keep it on. Just keep it on the whole time. He foresaw all this though, that Dom would then fly forward so fast that the helicopters would get pulled into each other. <laughs> The, the blades, the propeller blades go flying off, of course, because it looks badass. Dom would take off flip his car down the side of a road onto the Hoover Dam that of course are awaited by two giant semi-trucks that are controlled by our boy Dante. It's so amazingly dumb. And Dante's up there, of course. This was the plan the whole time. I knew you were gonna do this, Dom. You're so predictable. There's at least one post credit scene. There may have been one at the way end. I didn't stick around to watch Nick Fury saunter out and enlist Dominic and his family into the Avengers initiative. I was completely drained. To summarize, there's a lot more of the same from the previous couple entries. Louder, longer, dumber, Fast 10. We have two more on the way. This is a trilogy. Of course, it's a new trilogy. We're going to keep making these. They will never end. AI will take over and just CG all the actors. The scripts basically write themselves anyways. Family, 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 death, death, family, family. And speaking of family, the last thing I'll point out is Dom as a kid who's like 11 or 12 now. Movie starts up with him whipping donuts, doing shitties, whatever, whatever expression you want to use in the parking lot. Ruin a perfectly good parking lot, by the way. Um, these guys aren't good. Okay, these are not good people. They kill a lot of innocents throughout this film. A lot of cops die 
at the hands of Dom's vehicle. I just want to point that out. Anyway, the kid, who's already a better driver than everyone on the planet Earth because his dad's Dom, really not being raised properly. I know Dom says he is, but um, I saw the kid laughing gleefully as he was shooting a rocket next to his next to his uncle, blowing up people. I don't care if these are good, bad, or the other. This kid should not be having this much fun at 12 years old. He should be like scared, concerned for his life. No, he's climbing outside of a car as it's going a thousand miles an hour so that he can unlatch a bomb. This is bad parenting. I'm sorry. It has to be said. I know I'm I know I'm kind of dying on this hill. Dom's a bad dad. For a movie about family, uh, the family values are a little askew. Well, there you have it. My thoughts on Fast 10. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Did you see the movie already? Do you love it? Is your favorite of the film franchise? That's great. I'm glad for you. I'm happy. I myself, um, I don't know what I expect anymore. <laughs> I really don't. I try to have a good time, but there's this part of me that just thinks these are so lazy from a story standpoint. They just don't care at all. But obviously they do in a sense because they spend so much money and they do take the time to come up with some very creative, very lavish set pieces. So the heart's kind of in the right place at the same time. It's hard to be mad at that, I guess is the takeaway. It's hard to be mad at that. Let me know your thoughts. Like this video if you had a good time. Please subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie reviews every single week. I'd love to have you in the driver's seat or in the passenger seat. I guess I could drive. I almost got there. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care.